Jeremy S. Cook here, and what I have here is a Select Mini 3D printer for Monoprice. At around 200 bucks, I decided it was finally time to take the plunge and buy a 3D printer. I've been extremely impressed with what I can build with it, such as this macro adapter or adapter that goes from a NEMA 17 motor to a Omni wheel, made that in Fusion 360. Also, this enclosure for Wemos D1 mini board. So, I've been really impressed with it. Follow along to see the unboxing, as well as the setup, and at the end, how I actually made these parts. That's right, I have been extremely impressed with this printer. Now, granted, I haven't ever used any other sort of printer, so take that with a grain of salt, but for 200 bucks or so, it's hard to go wrong with this. So there's my new printer emerging from its plastic casing, or its styrofoam casing. It was missing a rubber piece on the bottom, but that was easily put on. That white stuff is the sample filament that comes with it. Supposedly you can't build anything good with it, but it looks like enough to start off, at least make some, some sort of trial print. So it even comes with an SD card, which is pretty cool. So this hatchbox filament is kind of what I saw as it's pretty good filament. Looks like it's got a little bit better tolerance on it as far as how, how small or big it is than normal, normal filament, so that's certainly a good thing. So turning that on now, as you notice, it's not a print screen, not a touch screen. Instead it uses this wheel, which isn't really a big deal in my mind because you don't use it that much. Oh, don't forget to un unpack this part, otherwise the, the head won't traverse correctly. But you can see me here using the wheel to make it go left and right, backwards and forwards. Again, I, I don't mind this wheel so much, but some people, if you're used to touchscreens too much, it might be a, a tough thing. So that that um, hatchbox filament goes on the side, and then right here I'm cranking down the bed so make sure it doesn't hit. And you're supposed to measure it with a piece of paper to make sure it's it's just the right length from or distance from the bed. I decided to use a feeler gauge instead, which worked pretty well. Probably would have worked either way, but mine, I've, I've yet to have any problems with the adjustment, so I'm really happy with that. So there I am feeding the film in, and that was a bit of a process, but no, no real problem. And after that, I heated it up, put a little bit out of the bottom. You can see me there scraping it off with the yellow plastic thing that came with it. That yellow thing is supposed to be for scraping off prints, I believe, but I found that to be pretty useless compared to a, a knife. So there I am making my first print. This is going to be that box for the Wemos D1 Mini that I talked about earlier. Ended up taking a little bit longer than I thought, or maybe I just didn't put, plan enough time for it, but I had to go somewhere and I just wasn't going to leave this running by itself just for the first time, even though supposedly you can. You know, sometimes these things, like any appliance, they can malfunction, which can be bad, but there it is, just laying down everything layer by layer. Really entertaining to see it work, especially the first time. Things seem to be going pretty well, and it's uh, it's slow going. I mean, compared to my experience with the CNC router, CNC routers are generally much, much faster. But the other hand, on the other hand, with this, it's almost almost like your normal 2D printer. You press a button, and it just does its job. I've had very little problem with it. It's it's pretty pretty amazing how this this unit that costs around 200 bucks just kind of works out of the box I'm I've been hesitant to get a printer in the past because well you can't work with any material like like wood or plastic or metal whatever and you can debate about printers that can do it but at the same time with the CNC router you just strap down a piece of waste wood if you want it, it can work with it at the same time it requires quite a bit of preparation as far as setting your feeds and speeds and stuff whereas a 3d printer you you set everything up but at the same time it just kind of works like right here for example i should have used support, a supporting structure on the edge and in fact i made it again when i i lost it temporarily and and did much better results and one thing i might note here you do have to clean it up sometimes that's the knife i'm using to scrape everything up but that's a um, macro lens adapter for my GoPro camera. Inside wasn't quite the right. I, I downloaded it from Thingiverse, so maybe it was right for their print, but for their one, but not for mine. So you put it on there and you see it looks really, really good, with not nearly as good when you take it off. So that should should improve some of my, some of my videos in the future. So the next thing was even more exciting. I had to make an adapter between an Omni wheel and a NEMA 17 motor. I downloaded Fusion 360, which is a 3D CAD program, CAD package, and made that, actually didn't take me much time whatsoever. I mean, I've got some experience with other packages, but that was pretty cool to see. So after that, I just 
downloaded through the SD card and it built it up nicely. It was pretty cool. I actually went through several revisions because I had several of these to make and by the end I got it to where it would go on nicely. I did have to use a drill on the first one so it's good to have manual tools still. I'm not going to give those up but this is a great tool to have at your disposal and you can see here it just slides on and adapts things perfectly. I'm looking forward to using this extensively in some projects in the future. Anyway, thanks for watching the video. I've got a few more thoughts at the end, so make sure to stay tuned. So this has been fun showing off what I've done with this. Now, one thing you might be wondering is why I didn't buy the Delta printer. It's a little bit cheaper. It has a 4.3 inch diameter build area. Well, the problem here is 4.3 inches, it's around here, and it's 4.7 by 4.7, if you're building some sort of square electronics enclosure or rectangular electronics enclosure, if you've got only that 4.3 inch diameter build area, it actually works out to be 3 inches by about 2 and a quarter versus 4.7 by 4.7 inches. A couple inches doesn't sound like a lot, but when you're talking about small areas like this, it really, really adds up. So I'm really happy I went with this. Now the Delta printer does look pretty awesome and I'm almost a little bit sad I didn't get it, but all in all, I'm, I've been really happy with how this thing performed. So, since you watched the whole video, I, I do have a lot of other really cool projects coming up. Hope you'll subscribe or whatever, but here's one of them. It's a, it's a Strand Beast with a, uh, it's painted with a 3D printed chassis in the middle, kind of a, a carriage for some stuff. I'm really excited how this this will this will go. It's turned out I painted it kind of like in between a ATST from Star Wars and a kind of like a World War II battleship with camouflage, you know, the, with the gray and black. So. Anyway, really excited to see what I'll come up with next on this, so follow along and thanks for watching. Jeremy S. Cook, signing off.